Hello and welcome to the lecture series on principles of microeconomics. In the previous class, we have talked about utility and how it is the one satisfying power of a commodity or a product. And thereafter, we have also seen it is also called as the satisfaction which a consumer derives after consumption of a good or bundle of goods. In today's class, we are going to look at the two important approaches to understanding utility analysis. One is called as the cardinal utility analysis and the other is called as the ordinal utility analysis or the indifference curve analysis. Here, let us look at first the cardinal approach and then move towards the ordinal approach. This is just a preliminary idea of how the cardinal utility analysis evolved over time. So, it was Alfred Marshall who provided the measure of utility in cardinal terms. Now, in cardinal terms particularly means you can number the preferences, you can number the uh, utility which is generated on account of consumption of a particular good. And thereafter we see that Alfred Marshall said that utility of a quantity of a good is the amount of money he or she is willing to pay instead of merely measuring it in terms of util. So if you can recollect last time we, we had drawn this table wherein we were talking about the quantity of a good and then satisfaction here and I said that this satisfaction is uh, denoted or it is measured in terms of utils but alfred marshall is going beyond the concept of utils and he is saying that utility of a quantity of a good is the amount of money a consumer is willing to pay for that particular commodity rather than measuring it in subjective terms of utils per se so this is an improvement over the regular version of measuring uh, utility in terms of utils but the a background to this approach given by alfred marshall rests on the works of william sandley jevons who contributed that any rational consumer in their decision making regarding the choice of a good for consumption would take into account the marginal utility of each good so this cardinal utility analysis approach is also called as the marginal utility analysis approach and it was the contribution of William Stanley Jevons as we have seen in the previous lecture as well that he says that if at all there is utility which you have to uh, you have to measure it is or if the consumer is a rational being this is very important the concept of rationality the consumer has to be rational in decision making in such a manner that his choice of consumption of good would take into account the marginal utility of each good now i'll talk about what marginal utility and total utility means in the next class but as of now take into account that it was William Stanley Jevons works which said that if at all a consumer has to make choices in terms of consumption of certain goods he or she is always going to take into account the marginal utility he or she is going to generate on account of consumption of that particular commodity per se and on the same background or on the same foundation it was Carl Menger, Leon Walrus and Alfred Marshall who developed the neoclassical approach of marginal utility analysis or cardinal utility analysis this is also called as the marginal utility analysis the marginal utility analysis or the cardinal utility analysis why marginal utility analysis because it was william sandley jevons who said that rational consumers in their decision regarding the consumption or the choice of consumption of particular good is going to take into account the marginal utility they generate out of consumption of that particular good so i hope this idea of how marshall's measure of utility in cardinal terms came into existence on the basis of the utility concept or the idea of william sandley jevons underlying the assumption that the consumers are always rational beings i hope the idea of cardinal utility analysis or marginal utility analysis is pretty much clear i'll talk about what marginal utility means in the next class which will be talking about marginal utility and total utility and then we move towards looking at the assumptions of cardinal utility analysis and what does the cardinal utility analysis and the law of diminishing marginal utility talks about and how the consumer equilibrates in the cardinal utility analysis or marginal utility analysis i hope this idea is pretty much clear let us now move to the ordinal utility analysis now since we know that cardinal utility analysis says that you have to uh, you have to number the utilities or use cardinal number to denote utilities jr hicks 
criticized this cardinal approach saying that one would not precisely read consumer's mind and measure utility in cardinal terms it is really difficult to do that because how do I, how do you measure the utility in cardinal terms in your mind and then assign that to uh, the consumption of a particular bundle of good so it was j r hicks who criticized the cardinal approach and he came up with his uh, idea or he put forward his idea of ordinal utility according to which a person can give only ranking or ordering the preferences he can only give ranking or order preferences in terms of this first second third etc to the utilities he or she derives from the goods or combination of certain goods so now what is happening is i am not using cardinal numbers rather i am ranking my preferences so this is what the ordinal utility analysis or the analysis of utility in ordinal terms given by j r hicks is talking about here it is ranking or order in terms of 1 2 3 etc to the utilities he or she is going to derive from various goods or the combination of certain goods now he explained the consumer choice using something called as budget constraint now budget constraint particularly means that it is the prices of the two goods which are into account they are given as well as the consumer's money income is given given this that means a consumer is going to make sure that he derives the maximum satisfaction out of the consumption of a bundle of goods given the prices of both the goods as well as the consumer's money income because my money income is my constraint that is my budget constraint and how consumer is uh, going to make choices is explained by j r hicks using the concept of budget constraint obviously when we look into the ordinal concept of utility analysis i am going to take uh, talk about the budget constraint budget space and how do consumers equilibrate in terms of the ordinal utility analysis or the indifference curve analysis so this is also popularly called as the indifference curve analysis as well here it was marginal utility analysis this is ordinal utility analysis or the indifference curve approach or analysis so here j r hicks is using the concept of budget constraint i have told you what budget constraint means it is the given the prices of both the goods into consideration as well as my money income i am going to make choices and these choices are obviously constrained by both the prices of these goods as well as my money income per se and then let's see how the consumer makes choices and derives maximum satisfaction out of the consumption of bundle of goods or goods per se so this concept was given by j r hicks and he explained consumer choice using the budget constraint concept later on he also used the indifference curve analysis to explain the ordinal utility analysis you will get to know that when the consumer is in equilibrium he is or his budget line is touching the highest attainable indifference curve now it won't make sense to you but as we move towards uh, the analysis of ordinal utility you will get to know how things are unfolding so he also uses the indifference curve analysis okay and according to j r hicks to explain consumer's choice cardinal measurement of utility was not required this is very important statement made by j r hicks he says that it was not required at all the cardinal measurement of utility rather measuring utility ordinarily was sufficient to look at the choices of consumer per se so these are the two approaches uh, to understand utility i hope the first approach is pretty much clear it rests on the work of william sandley jevons which says that rational consumers are always going to make sure that whenever they make choices they are going to take into account marginal utility or the additional utility which he or she is going to get on account of additional unit of uh, uh, additional unit of consumption of a good and therefore on this very principle the neoclassical approach of cardinal utility analysis or marginal utility analysis was given by alfred marshall saying that utility of a quantity of a good is the amount of money that a consumer is willing to pay for that particular commodity per se so this is the cardinal approach and on the contrary you have j r hicks's approach rejecting the idea of cardinal utility because it is really difficult to measure utility in cardinal terms in your brain and therefore he put forward the ordinal approach saying that you can rank your preferences or you can order your preferences in these terms rank 1 rank 2 rank 3 and uses the budget concept of budget constraints given both the prices of uh, the price of two goods into question and the consumer's money income and how he or she is going to make choices and thereafter the indifference curve analysis to look into the ordinal approach of utility per se so i hope 
the idea of both these types that means utility in terms of cardinal measurement and utility in terms of ordinal measurement cardinal means the marginal utility analysis and ordinal means the indifference curve analysis or indifference curve approach is pretty much clear in the next lecture i'll talk about the cardinal utility analysis but we first shall look into the concepts of utility marginal utility total utility the relationship between marginal utility and total utility and the laws of diminishing marginal utility equi marginal utility and then move towards something called as the consumer's equilibrium in cardinal utility analysis or approach thereafter we move towards the indifference curve analysis approach wherein we are going to look at what are indifference curves what are what are indifference maps thereafter we are going to look at certain properties of indifference curve look at budget constraint or budget line per se the equation of budget line the slope of budget line and thereafter we move towards understanding the consumer's equilibrium given his or her budget line as well as the indifference curves so please stay tuned for more thank you